Rover time. Uh, I've been working on the 400 up the top and it's now raining a bit so I'm back down here to do the next stage of the welding with Dotty. Uh, so I'm going to chop out the floor in the car where I need a new patch, clean it all up in much the same process as last time, weld it in and then I can move forward and start doing the heel boards. Well here we are in the other rear seat pan area. Um, more of the same really. Need to get so oh that's a bit crustier. Oh no, that's okay. I was worried then that whole seat belt mounting looked really horrible, but it's just surface flakage. We're gonna get that seat belt well out of the way because I think we're gonna need to take a bit more attention here and I'm get rid of that trim. So we have almost identical rock. It's not as well developed, but it's affecting essentially the same area. I ran out of batteries mid chop, I think. But we have a big hole, an even bigger hole. It's a good hole because it means progress. Uh, just needs a bit more wiggling. So that's what it looked on the underside. Beautiful, nice underseal. But the underseal hides the rust. Again, we keep going back to this with this car. It's just weird. It's only rotten because it filled with water and the water couldn't get out. Which is a shame. But never mind, that's why it ended up being basically free and um, a viable project. So over here like the other side just wants a good clean up again look how good that is you just don't get that on sd ones right well, that's, that's a lie i'm relieved that this isn't rotten that is the original under seal and it's all perfect lovely stuff really is remarkably solid for a car that just sat neglected it's never been welded under there at all. Bottom edge of the sill, perfect. Really nice. Um, so, more of the same. I probably won't video as much of this as I did the other side because it's essentially identical and I don't want to bore you too much. So we will just continue. That's kind of cool. This side, there's basically no surface rust on the actual panel there. The top's got a bit. That's not a rust hole, that's a screw hole. So don't worry about that. Um, so that's all good. I'm gonna go take some measurements and chop up my donor. Reference measurements have been taken. I've drilled out the welds, spot welds along here drawn on my lines and now I'm going to chop that bit out.
getting darker. It is actually starting to rain now. But I've cleaned up that panel and I'm just gonna put some zinc on it so you can see that. not going silly because that's all going to get cleaned off anyway then I'm going to put some hydrate 80 on that bit I exposed at the back and then I'm going to call it a night because I can't be bothered to do any more I've had a fun morning shopping with the girlfriend it's now tipping it down um, I am in the garage working again and it's time to finish chopping out that repair section in the middle. I made the plate but I never actually chopped out the metal that I needed gone. So I'll do that and then while I've got the welder out I'll weld both of those bits in together. The hydrate 80 has gone off. I'll put a bit of zinc around that aperture just so that that one... Um, Ah, excuse me, that one will uh, be nice and protected until I get back to the underside um, and shove it all back together. <coughs> Incidentally, when I say zinc, I'm using U-Pole Weld Through Number Two. It's a, a zinc-rich primer which you can weld through. It's not like a final protection for anything. It's not intended as a top surface. So it will rust eventually, but it's quite good for stopping flash rusting. And of course, it's good for welding through, which is what it's sold as. So I'm gonna go find my grinder. That's my, excuse me, one moment. There we go. That's the patch I made in the last video. I think it was the last one, I don't know. So I'm going to draw around it and then do my best to chop that out and then we can get rid of all this horrible scaly metal and then I might um, grind that back a bit more as well. It's all solid, like you can feel the back, it's perfect. It's just a bit ugly looking.
Wow, 37 minutes later. <coughs> we have all of that welded in, all the way around, nice welds. Again, I'm not hiding anything in these videos. This is um, backstreet bodging kind of welding. I did try and plug weld through onto that metal at the back, but it's about two mil thick, which means that the heat just doesn't penetrate and you end up filling in the plug weld hole without actually welding onto the parent metal at the back. I only realised I wasn't getting good penetration when I got to that top corner there and I smashed it with a hammer and all of these just pinged off. So what I've done is laid big slugs of stitch weld in here along there and down there and it looks disgusting uh, but it will get better because I will grind it off and make it smooth and as I've said many times before it's all getting covered in seam sealer anyway. But um, yeah this area I'm saying is now done. I'm going to protect these windows and then get the grinder out and do some serious grinding back and then um, I'm going to red oxide it or bonder primer and then seam seal it. Ordinarily in projects like this I wouldn't bother doing that kind of work until all the welding was done but I don't really know how long I'll be working on this before I switch back to another car so it'd be nice to have it all looking reasonably well protected and I think it's also nicer in the videos if people can see what the next logical step is because they probably can't be bothered to watch all of these videos so I will yeah seam seal this as I go In one of my other videos, I can't remember which one it was, um, somebody was asking what do I do to protect the glass. In this car, I don't care about the tailgate glass and I don't care about the windscreen because they're going to be swapped, but I do care about the window glasses and the quarter lights. So on that side, what I've done is I've put some plastic bags in the doors and then just slammed it. Where this door won't open and I can't get to it, um, I'm just going to tape something into it but the other stuff I've used in the past and I used it on the diesel is this industrial shrink wrap stuff because you can wrap the whole door and then you can still open it and close it and the benefit is if like me you're working in a shithole of a garage or outside at night time this is clear so it lets a bit more of the light through than you otherwise would get so I'm going to wrap that one around there and then go find some parcel tape or something so that I can tape something over the inside of that door as well and protect that glass. Uh, basically done. I'm gonna go and get a dustpan and brush or something, clean that all out, then I'll go and get the bonder primer and slap a load of that on. I'll probably have to degrease these again as well because um, the top sides I never took the protective wax off. That whole rear seat, seat apron thing came from the factory and delivery wax, so that will want to come off too. all 
cleaned out. I'm just going to degrease it with some base coat thinners. I really should use a panel wipe, but I haven't got any. So this will take the wax off. It'll digest absolutely everything else in the vicinity. And it's not good for your lungs either, especially in a non-ventilated place. So, of course, I'll be wearing my respirator. We have Bonda Primar. Yippee! That stuff. <coughs> Zinc rich stuff. I've given it a stir. Right, that's done. I'm going to wait for that to go off, then I'll come back later and I'll slap some seam sealer on it. I'll also cut out some little discs of steel to cover these inspection hatches. They ordinarily would have had um, a little plate with some tangs in it that get bent over when it's fitted, but I don't have any of those. And as we've said many a time before, it's not a concourse car. Uh, car. So we don't really care, do we? And no one's going to tell on me, so it's just going to be discs of steel chopped out of some other bit of rover that I find in the garden. Got a couple of discs just chopped out of some Zintec steel. And those will go in here, like so. And then I'll stick them down with the... Um, brushable seam sealer. When we get to that point I'm going to go for a cup of tea now and wait for all this bonder primer to go off. I've put it on quite thin because the whole lot's going to get, well not thin, I've put it in thin, oh cock, uh, in the centres but where the welds are I've dolped it on so it fills in most of it. Good, it does fit. Um, yeah so I'm going to go and have a cup of tea, wait for that to go off, come back and seam seal it and then I'm not sure how much more I'm going to do today you know when you get one of them really crusty scabs that you just want to pick that for me is one of them a real juicy one so I'm desperate to get in there with the grinder and see how bad it is if if it's like what I think all of the inner sill I think is perfect it's going to be weird like when i chopped the flanges off there at the back i'm imagining this is going to be the same my cunning plan as far as it goes at the moment is chop the heel board out first before i do i'll take some reference measurements of the height of the floor relative to that line there i'll mark it on here with a pen or maybe a notepad and then i'll chop all of that out in a sensible place then I'll go and chop up the heel boards from the donor panel and I can start playing how that's all going to go back together I keep putting my foot through here and cutting my leg so I might put a grinder through there anyway ugh, just to um, make a bit more space the reason I was leaving it is because I wanted it still strong i don't want anything to move yet that's the longitudinal chassis rail under there and i didn't want to um, weaken that area too much because i want it to be in about the right position i did buy new ones and they're in the shed but um 
looking at it I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to need them it's going to be a poke it and see type moment when we get there oh that really is completely crap I'm also going to I think as I've mentioned in previous videos chop this pad out um, you can't lift the whole thing out because you need to take the heater matrix out and I'm not going to be doing that but what I might do is take a knife and cut through here and then down to here and then down to the floor there and then straight along the middle there and remove it in two halves um, I think that's probably the best way of protecting it but yeah cup of tea time and then we'll come back and play a little bit more well I'd be lying if I said this had gone off completely it hasn't I've only left it about I don't know 20 minutes something like that long enough for a cup of tea but I'm impatient so I'm gonna start trying to seam seal anyway and we'll just see how it goes if it smears everywhere and it's gonna look rubbish I'll stop if it looks like it's about workable I'll carry on but the first thing is to gob these in incidentally I'm using U-Pole grey stripe brushable seam sealer fast drying over paintable permanently flexible blah 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 it's got such a lovely texture uh, it's really kind of I don't know what you call it, less viscous, well, it's considerably less viscous than the um, Tiger Seal or Polyethane Bond Sealer. It's lovely stuff. It also smells great, but once again, in a confined area, ugh, probably shouldn't be encouraged, but I like it. Yeah, I'm going to stop because this is just too wet still to really make a nice job of it. I will, however, gob that plate down um, because I want it semi-stuck there and then when I come back and it has all gone off properly I can make a really good job of gobbing it in. So this will just hold it in place while I go over it later. It's a shame because I did want all this bit kind of ticked off, but you know, it doesn't always go to plan as we know because we're all pros at this, aren't we? Now, right, that can sit there, that can rest, and I'm gonna go and put my brush in a tub of thinners or something. So I can use it again later. It's stopped raining, which is a result. I've brought this out here and I've marked off where I'm going to cut it. Um, the highest piece of corrosion I've got in the car is about here. So I've cut, um, or I will take out a whole section to that height, both sides. The reason I'm not joining in up here is because I'm almost certainly going to have more of these cars in the future and this already has the sort of scallops and furrows in it nicely stamped so if I can leave that as a piece for a rainy day in the future that's all good so I'm just going to take that bit because it has the fuel tank mounts in it um, and it's all really nice and it will take like well I don't know how long it took me when I did the diesel but basically I've fabricated that bit by hand and it did take quite a long time so I'll lop them off and then I can take them to work with me in the week and put them in the blasting machine to um, get them all nice and rust free shame people don't make these bits up for these cars because I'm sure they would sell a lot of them because it's a pain to make and um, yeah having bought that big chunk of steel um, it's been incredibly useful I think I paid 50 quid for that off my mate Phil um, and it was a well it wasn't a bargain but 
for the amount of time it saved me fabricating all of these bits those aren't hard shapes these are um, but yeah it's just a massive time saver it's what looks like difficult areas of the car to repair if you happen to have donor panels like these what starts off as quite a time-consuming scary job rapidly becomes ah, easy So that bit will go in there. Mm. Right, so next job, cut out that sound insulation pad and um, have to poke around, I think. Just use the razor blade to cut up through here to the top of the transmission tunnel, through there then along the top to the back. I've just got to get that seat belt mount out of the way. And then that should lift out. Sound pad out of the way. Then we get our first look at the transmission tunnel area. Um, that is another one of those big uh, rubber sticky back um, sound deadening pads on top of the transmission tunnel. So we're gonna to need to chop that off to see how far up the rust goes but it's all consistent with water having just sat there um, yeah I don't really want to do any more of that yet as I said I'm going to concentrate on the heel board area first and then um, once that's solid then I can do this area of the floor what's good is this bit looks all right I'd kind of anticipated having to change all of that as well. Uh, there's a central rib that goes under the car through here. And I was going to unpick the floor pan off the top of that. And then weld the new one down and do the full length of the car in one hit each side. But I don't think I'm going to bother now. Because that actually looks a lot more sound than I um, had remembered. So as long as the chassis rail is okay under there. I'll probably leave that bit undisturbed. Next job, I am going to find something to cover up the whole of that area so that I can grind and chop out that heel board without covering all my lovely white, sorry, not white, red paint uh, with grindings. Just bung an old blanket over that area to keep the rest, uh, sorry, the worst of the rust off. Rust and grindings that is. I want to take a reference measurement now because when I cut the board out it'll all go floppy and um, I want to be able to weld this in with the right sort of reference marks. This actually sits on top of the floor so I'll have to pre-drill plug weld MIG weld holes in this bit um, but the benefit is that I can take accurate measurements and straight down onto the top of my old sort of return flange and that's where the floor is. So that's what I'm going to do now. So it's 140 from there. Now what we got over here. 160 to there. So now I can chop away and I know what I'm doing. The good thing about a video is even if I lose those marks now because I said it out loud I know what it's going to be. Damn it. 
Well, at least we know it's good metal. So it's always good to double check both sides to see what you think is good metal is. And I'm pretty happy looking at that cut that where I've got to up here is also really sound. Uh, this kind of area this again on SD ones can be a problem sometimes all of this is just completely gone these holes rot out this is all perfect I wouldn't mind betting if I get really medieval on it if I find uh, something unpleasant to jab it with uh, let me get the screwdriver that is all perfect. Look at that, that isn't even rust on there. Tiny bit of surface here. But I wouldn't mind betting that actually all of that inner sill the whole way along is perfect. Um, you can actually see there's cavity wax still in the back sides of these. Um, some of the SD ones because they were trying to get over this reputation for being shite for rust. They were Z-barted from new, it was like a factory option I guess, and they usually have stickers in the windows to say if that's been done. This one doesn't have those stickers, but I'm always certain that it's had some sort of love and attention early in its life because it's just so incredibly solid. You can see why these cars are so torsionally stiff as well, because that massive sill section um, that's about one and a half to 1.2 mil and then the sill is one big lump as well So with this B pillar in here, they're actually pretty damn stiff with that big box there big lumpy transmission tunnel for the V8 So they're good cars um, They just have a bad reputation for some reason. I think it's just The normal mentality of some British people that oh, it's British it must be shit and um, Oh Rovers are crap. Why are you bothering? Well that kind of toss so we don't listen to them do we they don't know what nice cars are to drive they probably all like sierras or something right um i'm gonna probably make a little bit more of an exploratory cut in here and try and clean that corner up um in readiness for that panel to go back in got to be extremely quick because I've only got like a tiny bit of battery left that's all solid apart from where I accidentally chopped through it because I wasn't watching what I was doing this I'll clean up during the week it's still recording and that will go in there Bob's your uncle and your mum we will be making progress